God bless you. Wow. Joy, I couldn't have picked a song that would have been any better for this message today. Matter of fact, I grabbed my notes and showed Sam right there. Grace, grace greater than all of our sins. I would made a note and stuck it in there that I wanted to share with you. Well, I do. I count it a privilege to be here to share the Word of God with you today. Uh, I always get excited. I was sharing with Brother Glenn uh, when I was out to visit him just this last week that the day I get where I don't have these, what we call, anybody here ever run track before? It doesn't matter what sports you were in. You get these heebie-jeebies right down in here, and it's, it's like a bunch of a nest of hornets have been stirred up. And I know when that's still going that everything's okay. I say, the day that's not there, when I get up to preach, it's time to find a corner and get on my knees somewhere. But anyway, it's, it's always a privilege to, to be able to share the gospel wherever. I don't care if it's at a gas pump or at Walmart, down the aisle, or anything. How many of you know you can speak the Word of God anywhere and everywhere? Amen. The world is hungry and looking for something, and we have it. Why is it that we hoard it? Why don't we just give it out freely? Because there's not a person sitting in here that what you got, you didn't get it, but you got it freely. It didn't cause you deserved it or you earned it. Let me just ask you the first question today. Who here among you is without sin? How many of you know that phrase? You've heard that before. If you've ever read your Bible, you know that's when Jesus was talking uh, to those that were getting ready to stone the lady to death. And here's the thing. How many times do you think we need to hear that in our ear? Because we are so ready to pick up the stones and cast them at someone else because we see their sin. But let us never forget that the fact is that that. No one is sinless. That's why you need a Savior. My number one reason for preaching and teaching today and sharing with you is the fact that this is the reason why you need to understand grace. Apart from grace, you don't have any hope. Apart from the unmerited uh, favor of God, none of us have any hope. You see, uh, I, I can recall times in my life when I thought, well, uh, you know, I've been preaching now for 49 years, traveled in music ministry prior to that, but I, I always had this thing that the devil's always on your shoulder. How many of you know the devil's always hanging around somewhere? And I don't care what you've achieved in life. I'm just going to ask Sam a straight question. Have you sinned? Yes. Absolutely. Have I sinned? Yes. Something might have been this morning when I couldn't get in the bathroom with four women and five women in the house. <laughs> my, son in, uh, my son was asked a question in Sunday school years ago. He said, does anybody know where God is? And he waved his hand in the air and he said, yeah, I do. And she said, so Richard, tell us, where's God? He said, he's in the bathroom. He said, how do you know that? He says, because every Sunday morning my dad goes, my Lord, you still in there? <laughs> so, <laughs> in the midst of it, guess what? A merry heart does good like a medicine. You feel better already? Yeah. Our God is great. He's amazing. He's awesome. And we'll never be able to. I've been preaching 49 years, and I've never quite found all the words yet to express how I feel when I talk about my Jesus, there's something that has happened on the inside of me that I've been trying to explain to the world for years now. And like I said, a, a guy at a gas station, um, he and I were talking one day, and uh, I, I said, good day, isn't it? He said, I don't know. I'm not sure what's good about it. I said, well, a good thing is if you, if you know the Lord, you're ready to go. I, and it's another day closer. If you don't, you can be thankful he didn't come last night. <laughs> and it's amazing the conversation. Literally was able to pray and lead a guy to the Lord at the gas station. Now, I ask you, why are you saved by grace and, and faith alone and not by your works? Because God is not going to give anyone else the right to boast in anything other than himself. It's in him. Because I couldn't get good enough. And you know, so tell me, if you think you got saved any other way other than this free gift, just tell me what it is and I can show you how you miss the boat with it. 
Because God is so good to us. So the first question we ask, who is without sin? So let's look at the number one reason. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I, I want to just read a scripture to you. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But I want to read this scripture to you in Romans chapter 6. I'll go down to about verse 21. It says, But then what benefit return did you get from the things of which you are now ashamed? None, for the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God, you have a, your present reward in holiness. Present reward. Holiness. Present reward. Holiness. I'm walking in holiness. What does that mean to you and I? But he says, and it's in, it ends in eternal life. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you can have, you can have the blessed life to go to heaven in. You can have heaven on earth to go to heaven in when you understand God's grace and His mercy. If not, I can guarantee you, I don't care what denomination you belong to, I have preached probably in about every denomination that has a name. But there's one thing that I can preach that I know, that I know, that I know, that it is by God's grace and His mercy that I am saved. Amen. That God Himself has put it in my heart. And listen, it was like a light bulb came on uh, when God uh, spoke this to me. And I'll get to that in just a minute, but I want to read you one more verse here uh, to, as we roll on. For the wages which sin pays is death. Get that phrase, for the wages of which sin pays is death. You know what that tells me? All of your works, all of our deeds and all of our actions, this thing about the wages of sin is death. What are wages? That's something that you earn. <laughs> Guess what you earn when you think you can work your way into heaven? When you think you can get well enough, when you think you can be smart enough, when you think you can have enough money if I just had this or had that. But those wages earned are death because that's what we deserved in the beginning. Because we deserve death rather than eternal life. And God has made a way for us that we don't have to pay anything. We just receive. But then he goes on to say, but the gift of God. It's not something earned. It's the gift of God. Sin's wages cost you your life in an eternity and separation from God. But God's gift through His Son, Jesus Christ, in that God spared not His own Son, but He gave Him up for us all. I pray that phrase never leaves my, leaves my heart because I understand that through Him, through Jesus Christ and in Christ alone, I have this free gift, the joy, the fullness of my salvation. But are we challenged even as children of God? Yes, we are. Here's the reason why you need to understand grace. Because the devil will always be challenging you. The devil always challenges us. When's the last time you got up, Sam, to preach a message and you wasn't challenged before you got here or sometime before you got on the platform? Every time... Let me just ask you this. Any of you, Kim, when's the last time you got up to lead praise and worship, but you didn't have a challenge before you got there? Why? Because you're children of God. Whether you know it or not, you're not trying to earn God's favor. You already have it. Amen. The same old trick that took place in the Garden of Eden is what the devil tries to play our minds with each and every day. He says, if you eat this thing, you're going to become like God. And she bought into it. Not only her, but he stood right there with her because he already knew God had already told him, don't eat of that tree. And what took place in the Garden? The devil convinced her that if she just would do this, she'd be like God, and she already was. Already created in God's likeness and in His image. Notice this. God said, and He called forth out of the ground by the words of His mouth. How many of you know how powerful the words of your mouth are? God said they're a creative force, for this world was framed by words. 
and God spoke and he said, call forth from the ground the trees, the earth, the green, and all those things what were. But when it came to mankind, he took his own hand and he took the dust of the earth and he formed it and he made man and he created man in his likeness and in his image. Never for us to ever doubt it. But there's more doubters in this world today than you can shake a stick at. Why? Because we've been indoctrinated through our educational systems and stuff. Instead of being educated, we've been indoctrinated. We've indoctrinated and, and took God out of everything, took Him out of our life, out of our living, out of our schools, out of our reading, out of our teaching, and we've got drag queens and everything else trying to read and teach our kids. Why? Because people just don't understand the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but the devil's duping so many people and they're perishing because they're believing a lie and be damned rather than to know the truth they should not perish why because there's a free gift <laughs> there's this thing called grace and mercy and and i'm, I'm going to show it to you it started way back with abraham and we see grace and mercy in operation with him. It was God's grace with Abraham. Wasn't because Abraham was perfect. Wasn't because of all of his deeds and everything. But God so loved. And it's not about your denomination. And it's not about your indoctrination. Matter of fact, indoctrination is a very, very strong thing. And let me tell you. It can make you so familiar with what you think you believe that you miss what the Holy Spirit has to say some days. Indoctrination will cause you. I remember years ago, I was home in Southern Illinois and I preached in a Baptist, General Baptist church down there. Now, how many of you know the difference in the General Baptist and the Southern Baptist? The General Baptist, we were raised to believe that if you didn't keep your ducks in a row, if you didn't live so and so, that you can lose your salvation. And as a kid, I lived in fear of that. Because I had thoughts that come to my mind. My lands all went through puberty. And I had thoughts that come. I told him one time before, I said, The Lord saved me. He didn't blind me. I still recognize a good looking woman nowadays. <laughs> if I couldn't, how could I love my own? Which let me. Wave at me, sweetheart. Stand up real quick. We, I, she don't want to stand up, but I want her to anyway. That little lady right there is the reason why. She's the reason why I can do what I do. Back home, you know, would she work for the people there? She makes me look good no matter what I've done. She keeps me, she keeps me on track. You know, uh, Sam, I don't know about you, but I'll just tell you this right out. Uh, you know, I know the voice of God when I hear it, and sometimes it sounds a lot like Sandra. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but our God is amazing because He so loves us. God knows what we need, have, what we have need of, even before we ask Him. And so I've been blessed to have a woman who has stuck by my side, who has loved me and even helped me at times through things that were difficult for me. I can recall one time when it's... Uh, I was just struggling with something, and uh, she just took me, and I laid my head over in her lap, and she just held me like a little child. And I lay there, and I, I wept and wept and wept until whatever it was that was inside of me, she just kept speaking the Word of God over me. And uh, I, I don't know how to explain it other than when I got up off of the couch and, and my head out of her lap, I, I was a better man than when I laid down there. Because God just works through so many angles when you know the love of God. You see, my wife caught on to this grace thing before I did. And evidently, she's still with me because she's, <laughs> grace and mercy has been extended all the days of my life. So we understand it's not about our denomination. It's not about our indoctrination. But our indoctrination can certainly hurt us at times. We get so uh, bound up on what we've been taught. You see, sometimes with our own indoctrination, uh, uh, because we know our denomination has a church covenant that's hung on the wall, and uh, our, our organization, we have the 16 
uh, doctrines of faith uh, that we trust and believe in. And uh, so, uh, you know, you're raised being taught certain things, and in the midst of that, we get so indoctrinated. So uh, something that hurt me in understanding grace, I searched this Bible through, uh, and, and I, I have looked and looked for the Word of God, and, and Lord, show me, just teach me your ways. And I became guilty of something that I shared with someone else. The next thing I knew, I was looking through the Word, and I'll, I'll guarantee you almost every one of us that belong to a denomination of some kind, and we all do, that we read that Word of God either to prove what we believe or disprove what someone else is trying to get us to believe that we don't agree with. And it will kill you. You know why I know it will? Because the reason they rejected Jesus was because of familiarity. Familiarity kills. When you already, and, and I do this sometimes with my wife, she'll start a sentence and I'll finish it for her. And she'll look at me like, don't interrupt me. <laughs> and sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. But in her opinion, I'm never the right one. Okay. <laughs> The truth of it is, we can get so familiar that we, open, we don't even open our eyes to let God reveal some new, fresh revelation to us. Every time you open that Word, that's why it's called the Living Word. We should be, we should be gaining food from this Word of God. It should be feeding us. It should be helping us to grow. And it should make us hungry. This is the only place, folks, where gluttony is totally approved of hungering, thirsting at the righteousness that you may be filled. And I even like that part in the Scriptures in Ephesians 3, I believe 16, 17, somewhere along in there, that talks about that you be filled to the fullest, to overflowing, till you're totally flooded. Now, how good is that? Well, let me ask you a question. Has anybody in here ever seen a flood? If you have, wave at me. What happens when it flooded? It went beyond its normal boundaries. Think about it. No wonder God wants us filled and flooded with the Spirit of God that lives within us. You, you'll never get there until you understand grace because the devil will always be talking you out and short side you to keep you from getting where God wants you to get. But when you're filled and you're flooded with it, that means it has no boundaries. You, you're free. You're free in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's not free to just go out and live like you want to. Matter of fact, the Bible says that if you uh, habitually sin and you desire to do these things, don't say that you know me or you've ever known me. You see, one of the things that makes it difficult for your line of teaching on grace, our line of teaching on grace, is because people say, oh, you're just giving them a license to sin. No, you got a license to sin anyway. What we're doing is giving you the liberty to serve the Lord with all your heart, to operate in freedom, to not feel like every time you turn around, you're in one day and you're out the next. It's kind of like being the kid on the block that nobody wants on your team. You just wonder, am I ever going to fit in somewhere? And so we spend more time trying to find a way to do more. And then no matter what you do, how many of you have been through that hour of prayer theme? I've done that. I've been through that. I've been through the whole course. Could you not tarry one hour and pray? That was a teaching course. I, I would try to find the time to pray. And, and, and then when I couldn't get my hour in, guess what? Who was sitting on the shoulder? See there, you committed and you can't do it. The only time the devil will tell you the truth is when he tells you, you can't do it. I'm telling you today, you can't do it. You can't get good enough. You can't pray long enough. You can't spend enough. You can't give enough to get into the kingdom of God. The only way you're going to come is through Jesus Christ our Lord, through faith and grace alone, and no other way. No other way. What's another thing I think we need to take a look at? I think we need to understand. I had tons of scriptures today, Sam, but I'm just not going to get there, it don't look like. But the bottom line is this, when we know and understand 
the mercy and the grace of God will quit buying into the lies of the enemy. How many of you know that the Bible talks about that pulling down those strongholds that the enemy comes with and then all those vain imaginations that he brings against our mind? You see, I cannot control nor can you control what thoughts come to your mind. You can't control what thoughts come to your mind. What you can control is what you do with those thoughts when they come. And I guarantee you, if you do not understand grace, the enemy will beat on you all the days of your life. Well, see what you was just thinking? You didn't do anything with it, but see what you was thinking? See how you responded to that? You know you got mad. You know that guy cut you off. You know what you was thinking, but you didn't say it. But you know how you're acting. See, the enemy never ceases. That's why you need to know and nail it down once and for all. When I said yes to Jesus, God didn't withhold one thing from me. He gave me everything and all that I would ever need to walk with Him, to talk with Him, to have intimacy with Him. You see, when I got born again, that was my birthing moment. That was that intimacy that I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I'm not new and then old, new and old, new and old. No, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I live my life habitually without sin, and strive toward the mark of the high calling of, of perfection, though I never reach it, but in Christ Jesus, you'll be amazing what you can accomplish when we just put the lies of the devil aside and simply say, God, if you're in it, I want it. If you're not, I leave it alone. That's a little saying we got in our church, you know, that if you live in the Word until the Word lives in you, you'll be amazed what you can accomplish in the period of time that God gives you here on this earth. Secondly, the enemy will never tell you you can do it. He'll always tell you you can't. You can't do it. And then he tells you you're not worthy. And, you know, none of us, I love the old song, uh, Unworthy. Have you ever heard that one? Anybody know that old song? Unworthy, but he made me worthy. Amen. It wasn't about what I could do. He made me worthy. And so our God is such a great God. Satan will try to make you question your standing with God. Now, Sam, to be real frank and honest with you, one of the people who helped me the most with understanding grace was Joseph Prince. Any of y'all, uh, anyway, an Asian preacher. He just was so explicit, explanatory, step by step by step. I heard the man preach one day, and then we put it in our recorder, and day after day after day, I heard grace taught. And one of the things that just blew me out of the water, and I'll try to get this together and wrap it down here for too long, but one of the things in 1 John 1, 9, this was a stand-on scripture that was used so many times to make you say, now, you got to have, you got to unconfess sin in your life so you know you need to get that straightened out or you're going to be backslidden. I want, I want you to listen to this. 1 John 1, 9 says that if, see that big word, if, if you confess your sins, he's faithful just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If. Let me make this. It's a pretty bold statement, but I believe it's true. When I gave my heart to Jesus, Full time, got born again. From that moment on, I was as saved as I ever was going to get. Amen. You understand that? I was as saved as I'm ever going to get. But I have maturity that has to come along with my walk with God. The more I spend intimacy, time with God, the more I spend with, in the Word, walking with God, praising the Lord. How many of you just take time to take time out to just praise the Lord? Sometimes I just get on the piano at home and start singing songs unto the Lord. And it's amazing to me how the music quiets the heart. It gives you a, 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 a silent place, even though you're singing, to get in the presence of God. How many of you know how easy it is to get in the, the presence of God? Is He inhabits the praise of His people. So if you want to get rid of the devil and he's hounding your day, just start praising God. 
Start praising God for the liberty that you have in Christ through His faith, through faith and grace alone, and you'll find out that the devil doesn't want to stick around very long to hear someone praising God, because that's the thing he wanted that got him thrown out. He wanted the praise that belonged to God. He wanted it all for himself, and that's the problem we got in our world we're living in today. Everybody's convinced if I just had what you had, things would be a lot better. Or you, or, or this is the one that just cracks me up anymore. The Bible's outdated. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus didn't walk in the day we're living in, so he didn't have any understanding of that. Somebody please go read the rest of the book. Go read the rest of it. You want to know what's going on today? I mean, I could start here and be here for the next five hours just breaking down what's happening today. You see, because this day hasn't caught me unaware. You know why? Because I live in the Word of God. Because I read the Word of God. You want to know why we're in such a messed up situation? Read what the Scripture says. I'm telling you, I believe, just I believe, we're living in the midnight hour. I believe we're living in the very end of times as we know it because they've turned everything upside down. We're calling right wrong and wrong right. We're doing everything that the Bible says. So that's outdated. Jesus didn't know how these days would be. And so I don't even believe that Word of God. The earth is hundreds of billions of years old. I believe in evolution. I don't believe in creation. And what has happened? We're simply living exactly where the Scripture tells us day by day we're living it out. And if you don't read the Word, you'll be ever fearful. But God says, I want you to avoid those days. I would, I, I would that those days didn't catch you unaware. They won't if you read the Scriptures. They won't if you understand grace. I'm glad I finally got it nailed down. It took the sweat out of my labor. Amen. That's no joke. He said, you'll earn your living by the sweat of your brow. But when you understand grace, you'll find out it's like just jumping into the river. And you, you know, I wouldn't advise jumping into White River unless you had something around you. <laughs> but nonetheless, you all know what that current can do, don't you? There's too many people that are out there with their works. They got both oars in the water and they're just pulling and tugging and tugging and tugging, trying to get back to the dam. Well, when the joy and the delight is if you just kind of let loose and let it go and just let the current take you. Let me tell you what. You get in, you get in the current and in the flow with the Holy Spirit of God who knows all things, will reveal to you all things and teach you all things. And the places He will take you will be absolutely amazing. You take the blinders off, quit reading your Bible with tunnel vision because that's what my doctrine says. But you get in the Word of God and just say, Holy Spirit, open the eyes of my understanding standing to a great fresh revelation of Jesus Christ and my great Redeemer and I want to do great and mighty things for you but God it'll be you and you alone no one can build the church if God doesn't build the church it won't get done Amen. but let me tell you he needs every one of you I love it Sam says a lot of the same things I tell my congregation we couldn't do it without you Preachers preach because we're called to preach. Teachers teach because they're called to teach. Somewhere along the line, people give in to the grace of God, what God has for them in their life. And I guarantee it's more beautiful than anything you ever planned. Now then, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to cleanse you, forgive you, and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That was the mainstay for saying, see there, you can lose your salvation if you confess your sin. A little study, especially in my Bible's Amplified, I love that little introduction to 1 John. Talking about Gnosticism. And a lot of people don't even understand what Gnosticism is. And then I, I'm going to give you a, a clear definition here, and then I will wrap it down. I, I wanted you to see this. First off, he's talking to Jewish brethren, okay? Understand that. In 1 John 1, 9, he's talking to Jewish brethren. Now, the problem with Gnosticism was is that it was a false doctrine. And they were trying to have salvation believing in a false doctrine. 
And it was in my notes somewhere, folks, where Paul said, if you preach any other gospel other than that, what is the gospel? It's the gospel of grace. Any other thing falls far short. The other scripture in there talks about that if you do this, you have fallen from grace. It didn't mean say you lost your salvation. It says that grace is up here and, uh, and over the Ark of the Covenant. It's above and beyond. And down here is the law. And you can't get anywhere trying to live by the law other than it brings about death. But law points out our sin. But grace, when you're trying to do your own works, you've fallen from grace. It means you're, you've come in from this point of great gift and blessing, and now you're down here trying to live by your works and stuff, and it just isn't going to get the job done. Amen. It'll never bring satisfaction because you'll never be able to earn it, to work it to, good, to get good enough in order to do it. Now, in this Gnosticism, the doctrine regarding the human Jesus as a ghost. Now understand what he was talking to. John was writing here, and he was addressing Jewish brethren that believed in uh, this doctrine of Gnosticism regarding the human Jesus as, as human Jesus as a ghost. Christ only seemed to have a body. That's what they were believing in. Now, if he didn't really have a body, that's a false doctrine because he could have never been the sacrificial lamb. Because, you see, he had to come through the virgin birth because the bloodline of man is tainted. When man fell, the bloodline of man was tainted. Therefore, it had to be a supernatural act of the Holy Spirit to impregnate Mary or else the, the sacrifice would have been impure. And God would not accept any sacrifice other than the pure. So that's why the virgin birth had to be. Then secondly, Jesus had to live in a body in this life and live the letter of the law or he still could not have been a perfect sacrifice. You get the line of thinking here. Gnosticism was against that because they didn't think he really suffered. They didn't think he had a body. He was like a ghost. And then so this, but this uh, Gnosticism Regarding the human Jesus as a ghost, Christ only seemed to have a body. Then there's uh, Serenthianism, making Jesus a dual personality, uh, at times human and at times divine. Believing that, there is no way you could get born again. So he was, a tr he was, a t he was a bringing this to their attention, that if this is what you're believing on, he said, if you'll confess your sin, what sin was it? The sin of unbelief of the true Jesus. The sin of unbelief. The sin of believing that he didn't have a body. The sin of believing that he was just a ghost. The sin of believing he didn't really suffer the pain and anguish that he did. You understand? And he's saying this to them. If you'll confess this sin, he, Jesus, the one you didn't believe in was real and had a body, is faithful and just to forgive you and then cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And how will he do it? Amen. With one work of grace. When you get born again, he makes you worthy. He puts you. What was lost? The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And many of them translated those who were lost. I like the one that says that. What was lost in the garden? Two people, he said, you surely die if you eat of this. But what was actually lost? Their right standing with God. That's what was lost. Man's right standing with God. And so what did he do? He comes along and Jesus declares us holy. Fully and completely. How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that once and for all, he offered up a sacrifice of himself. He said, a body he has made for me. You see, Gnosticism went directly against the Scriptures. The Bible will always interpret the Bible. Once and for all, he paid the sacrifice. And he's not going in like the other chief high priests that had to go in every year for the remission of the sins. No, Jesus paid the price once and for all, and he's not coming down out of heaven to do anything different than what he's already done. If you don't receive this gift of his body, living sacrifice and then we mentioned it last sunday what's the purpose of knowing that he raised him from the dead because if the chief high priest didn't come out behind the curtain their sins were held against them 
But Jesus, once and for all, paid the price, and he rose again from the grave. In other words, come behind, out behind the curtain so that you and I today can walk straight in to the Holy of Holies and talk with God, have intimacy with God, and believe in him with all of our hearts. Hallelujah. So my question was this. What really nailed it down for me was when I really understood that if I'm over here with my if, I confess my sins. But if I can't get into the Holy of Holies without being struck dead with sin in my life, then how am I, how am I ever going to confess my sin to him if this is what they're saying in one bear and over here they're saying something else? What's the real truth? The truth is, I'm wrapped in a robe of righteousness. Amen. I've been put in right standing with God, and I can come boldly to the throne of grace anytime I please. Amen. Is it because I don't sin? Is it because I don't have any sin? No, it's because I'm accounted unto Him as righteousness because I have on the redeeming robe of Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Brother Sam. Oh, we'll go away. Would you be seated for just a minute? You know, while we've got Dale and Sandra here, and uh, see, uh, I, I, we just want everybody to know the freedom and the liberty that he's preached about this morning. And I remember Joyce uh, Cox telling me that she went to a church. She said, and, and I go in on Sunday morning, and I felt like I got saved again but I got lost on the parking lot getting back to my car. Now, I got to ask you, because I, I, I've never lived with, with that. What's it like? I mean, is it, is, it, uh, is it fear? Is there a lot of fear and uncertainty? What's it like? The number one anxiety, I believe, is the fact of, of fear that I won't please God, uh, which is a good thing. But when it haunts you to the point where you know how many times I've heard Satan say to me, you see what you felt and what you thought, what makes you worthy to get up and preach in front of other people? Now, that's a battle. But when I come to the point of understanding that it doesn't matter what passed my way, what happened, it's all under the blood. You know, Sam, I, I truly believe this, that when you're truly born again, if you never, ever come to God ever again, ever sin you created in the past, in the present and in the future, it was took care of at the cross. Yeah. Now, I do come to him because I want to have that fellowship, intimacy, and walk with him. Yeah. But it isn't based off if I keep myself confessed up. I asked a guy one day, I said, you've known me for a long time. I said, supposing I threw a cussing fit and knocked my foreman flat and rung out and walked out across the highway and got ran over killed, heaven or hell? Well, he looked at me so strange. See, he had be grown up under some of the same doctrine that I had. And he looked at me and he said, I'd hate to think that you'd go to hell. I've had such confidence in your ministry all these years. I said, I would too. But you see, that's what the devil would challenge everyone with. That's living in constant fear of not getting it right. A lady in our church came to me after I started preaching grace. And trust me, you start preaching grace in an AOG church, you're going to get challenges. And the one lady, uh, she told me, she said, since you taught this and we see it in the Word of God, she said, I've never been so free in my life. She said, I grew up my whole life being afraid I couldn't please God no matter what to do. It wasn't enough. But she said, I have been at such liberty. She blossomed and bloomed, sang for us, and just uh, her life was totally changed. And when, when you get out from underneath the bondage, you see, we're selling ourselves once again into legalism, and we're being enslaved to that rather than in the liberty and the freedom that I have in Christ Jesus. So is it liberty to serve or liberty to sin? No, it's liberty to serve. Yeah. I read the book of Galatians last night yeah. to get ready for your message today. Yeah, I and never God, got there, did I? God just opened up so much for yeah. me in the book of Galatians because they, <clears throat> they received grace, but the legalist teachers yeah. came in 
trying to pull them back into the works of the law. And and um, well, Actually, Paul, I had that same scripture Paul is strong in Galatians. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't 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 go back there. No, don't go back. Don't go back there. That's don't not the gospel of grace. Bondage. That's another that's another message, yeah. and it's not the gospel of grace. Yeah. And but you know, uh, how many of you? Uh, we're just sort of relaxed in this church. How many of you could say, yeah, at one time in my life. I believed that you had to earn your salvation or you could lose your salvation. Would you raise your hands? Yeah. Some, sometime in my life I believed that, okay? Yeah. More than half of the people in here today. Yeah. And, and so uh, the, I just thank God for what's happening in the world because people from all different denominations, and we identified at one time over 50 denominations in this church uh, because that's Mountain Home. That's yeah. Baxter County people from all over the world and uh, but you know it seems like for instance in in I'll just say this in the Church of Christ that believed in a work salvation and in um, you had to be baptized to be saved right and and if you weren't baptized you weren't saved so it added baptism to salvation yeah. and uh, uh, I knew a man that confessed Christ in the hospital here was going to the church to get baptized, died on the way to the church, and the preacher told him his family went to hell because mm. he didn't make it to the water. Yeah. So if you don't make it to the water and you don't make it to enough good works and you don't make it to that place where you think you're good enough, then you're going to go to hell. I believe that man's in heaven, and there's going to be Absolutely. a surprise preacher one day to see him there. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, and, that's and, worthy of praise. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, um, I, just, I, just want, I just want us to let this sink in and settle in today. So we walk out of here. All glory belongs to God. All glory belongs to God. That was a great message of grace. A great message of grace. And I... I, I, but I, I see that what's happened even with, who is the author? Annette, you love this author, and he was in the Church of Christ, and they tried to vote him out of, of the Church of Christ. He's written a million books. Max Licato, how many of you have read a Max Licato book? No, Did you know no. he's a Church of Christ preacher? <laughs> and they tried to vote him out. There's so many people in, in the Church of Christ now that are believing in grace, they couldn't vote him out of that denomination. Mm -hmm. And, and it's happening in denominations all across. Not, I'm not just picking on the, the Church of Christ. It's happening on denominations all over the Assemblies of God. Pastor James River has written a book about salvation by grace through faith yeah. Yeah. and faith alone. Yeah. And so all across denominational lines, God is giving us this message. And folks... Uh, don't make a difference what the name is on the front of the church. What makes a difference is what, who you have in your heart. Amen. Who you have in Amen. your heart. And if you have him in your heart, you're free, you're clean, you're clear, you're going to heaven, and now let's go home. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to open these doors over here. If you're interested in talking to Pastor Dale, he and I will be over there. Derek will be back next week preaching, okay? He'll be back next week preaching, so he'll be, uh, I gotta, he's got a message for us, wow, next week. And I love you folks. Daryl, Bible study going good on Wednesday nights. Man, if you want to study the Bible deep in the book of Acts, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, Young at Heart Ministry, look the person next to you and say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm justified, I've got it all, I'm going Amen. to heaven, glory to God. Preach yourself a message today. We'll open the doors. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Be blessed as you go out today. God bless you as you go.